Hey guys, in this exercise 10-1, we're going to be looking at interior and exterior elevation. And we're just looking at the four main exterior elevations for this exercise 10-1. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go under our project browser and we're going to go under the first floor plan. Switching back from the ceiling plan to the first floor plan, you are going to examine this right here. This is your elevation icon. So this is what creates the view. If I click on the square, you'll have these multiple question marks appear, and this is to create other side elevations. Now, when I click on the green triangle here, you're able to see a infinite line for a, you know, this is where your view is. These are the snap points for where your views are starting from, and its depth is infinite, meaning it's moving in that direction at, at infinite. Now, if you want to create your own view of elevation, you're gonna go under view, tab and you're going to go under create elevation now since this is an exterior elevation you're going to press the downward arrow and you're going to select elevation now once you're inside of a building it will actually point onto one of the walls but we want an exterior elevation so we're going to select here now this elevation is different from the elevation we have just created why because when we select this triangle we now have a point by which we can drag how much we see. So we're seeing the full width of the building. Now, if I wanted to shrink this down and we can open up the view by hitting triangle. Notice how I only see this portion of the building. I'll X out of elevation 1A again. It automatically creates the view. If I click on the triangle again, now I got the full width of the elevation. That's how you can see the full width of the elevation in Revit. You're going to switch back to this view to see you can actually see this view at full length. Now, anytime an elevation is present on any level, it will actually show. So this particular elevation goes all the way to the top of the ceiling. You can actually have your tag displayed. Looking at the top of the roof, you can see how the gable does not complete all the way through. Why would it do that? Now going back to the first floor plan, notice how the depth of the ele elevation view is not all the way to the building, all the way through the building. So if I do this, what it's saying is I'm actually cutting a plane right here outside of the building and I'm looking in all the way to the exterior of the other side. Wherever you fall short, you'll only be able to see that depth. For example, if I cut my view to be that depth, I shouldn't be able to see the garage doors. Switching back to the elevation 1A view, notice how now we're seeing the front of the building, but we cannot see the garage doors because it's not going that far in. We're gonna go back to the first floor plan, and now we're gonna set it to the actual depth by selecting the triangle, selecting these arrows, and pulling them all the way through the building, thereby able to create the whole elevation of the building. We have the chimney. This is the top of the ridge. This, this is the top of your lower roofs. Next thing we're gonna look at is the crop region. This square that I'm expanding down and up is known as the crop region. The crop region is turned on and off based on your view taskbar, which we had visited in our chapter two, or Revit exercise two. This is where you hide and show crop region. So if I hide my crop region, it will completely disappear. And if I show my crop region, I should be able to see it. And notice how if I go expand and I can also contract my crop region. So this will allow you to crop your region as far as the plane is looking directly at the elevation. And then when we're looking from above, we can use those arrows on the far clip plane and adjust it that way. This is pretty much what adjustment grids do on a plan. Next, we're going to be just looking at this main entry right here. So this is the view that we had created, Elevation 1A. So in order to rename this view, I'm going to zoom in there and notice how quickly I can extract detail elevations so i'm just going to zoom into right right here where we're just looking at the front entry and we're going to scroll down under our project browser and go down to elevation 1a so that's our entry elevation next i'm going to go under the modified tab 
and I'm going to look at line work or LW. This allows you to override the lines that you have directly in front of you. We're going to set the lines to wide, wide lines, and we're going to simply select the lines. And this will allow you to actually give emphasis to your surrounding elevation. Another way to do this is to go under annotate and you're going to go under detail lines and you're going to set your lines to be wide. And this will allow you to also draw wide lines. Now, the reason we're not able to see wide lines is because I had thin line command on, but this is what wide lines look like. This is to highlight a specific portion of the elevation to be standing out. With that completed, that concludes exercise 10-1. Please like, subscribe, and comment below. Follow for more content.